we're back on the KLR. KLR has been running really good, man. I don't know. It starts right up every day. So I don't know if it was the uh, connector by the starter relay. I know that that main connector powers everything on the bike, and it was it was corroded. So I cleaned it all out with WD-40, and it it really helped out a lot. I mean, the bike just started right up after that. Valves might still need an adjustment, but we'll, I won't find out about that till a really cold winter again. Right now, it's still, uh, you know, it's getting warmer. So you're not going to see, like the bike will just run better every day that goes by. But it's still a little cold, too cold to be riding the XR. It's definitely way too cold to be riding the XR because it the XR is just you know it's a good it's a good bike for summer for spring a little bit of fall when the leaves start falling and then I usually put it away and I, or I use it as a backup bike you know when there's a problem with this bike which I ended up doing when this bike was down I had to get I had to run up there to get the uh, the XR because I, you know, I had work to do and it was really cold. But as far as starting goes, the XR has no problem running in cold weather. It's an air-cooled bike. It doesn't have much to it, you know. It'll, it, damn, those are big old fucking holes. Huh? You think you'd learn not to hit those things, Greg? Don't hit those. What the fuck's wrong with you? So, yeah, the XR is uh, definitely a very, very reliable world. Up no problem in any kind of weather. And it actually surprises me sometimes in the summertime when that thing's running. I mean, in the hottest of days, it just, you can swear that something's going to happen to it in the heat and it doesn't it just runs the way it's supposed to it never, never gives me any issues at all and it's a good, definitely a good backup bike it's just too cold to ride being exposed I mean this KLR you don't realize it, like when you're sitting in this cockpit here and you're, you're behind all these fairings. You're definitely protected. <clears throat> I hate to be like an aggressive dickhead, but that, that cab was definitely going to cause a problem. If there's a approach in that intersection, like, just like, -dum 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 -dum. like, I don't know what he's going to do, whatever it is, it's going to be stupid.
those kids, those kids are fucking got balls, man. I'm telling you, it's it's really uh, really a ballsy bike. I tell you, it's just heavy, but it can't lose. Definitely have balls, and they got a grunt to them that's not not to be re reproduced very easily. I don't know if you can get that kind of grunt off an XR, but I don't think so. got to get it pretty close though. <clears throat> Whoa, holy shit, that was a bad hole. I didn't even see that till the last second. That was a bad one, man. It would be nice to take some time to, to work on this bike, clean up all the rust and uh, change, you know, change the caliper on the back because it's all seized up. Maybe get a chance to work on it. <clears throat> but getting back on this bike, Sometimes it's fun, like you have, if you haven't been driving it for a while, and then you get back on it, it's fucking hilarious. Because I notice that people, they don't turn like when you're... When they're near you, they don't want to get near you on this thing. But you do have to be careful though, because... Uh, you don't want to get too crazy. You know, you get up to like 28, 30, that's it. I mean, you can't fuck around too much more in the city. Because uh, if something gets in front of you, like, where you're going to be doing some really crazy shit, it's going to get ugly. So, get yeah, a little bit of fun, but don't don't go nuts on the speed, because you'll, you'll, you'll inevitably have something get in your way that you can't get out of, out of the way of. you can't avoid you know like you usually 99% of the time doing 25 30 miles an hour you can avoid impact with something here by making evasive move maneuvers but if you go faster than that you won't have any time to to react and you'll end up impacting something. You might end up killing someone in the street here because there's so many people walking around and stuff. It does get quite scary. But for the most part, when you keep the speed around 30 here, like I'm doing 30 right now, it's fun. You know, it's like, uh, it's a little bit faster than a bike, a bicycle. And you got the grunt sound for alerting cars I mean that was fun you got around those buses and stuff check my brakes like if I see that my pads are 
down to a quarter left arm, I just replace them because I don't, I can't mess around with brakes. I bleed them twice a year. I put in dot five, dot four, whatever you know I can get, but I, I don't put any crappy brake fluid into it. I'm constantly checking my brakes. You know, if my calipers don't look right, I, I just order another caliper because I can't afford to get into a situation where I have brake malfunction. I mean, as you can see, everything, all your brakes have to be in order here in New York. So, uh, if they're not, and you happen to get into a situation where you can't brake, man, it's going to be bad. Like, I had, I had a caliper fall off one time off a bike, a front caliper. And I went to hit the brake and there was nothing. And I was just like, oh my god. Like, but, you know, like, I'm so used to using rear braking. But before I ran into the back of the truck, I was able to hit my rear brake. Because that's what you want to be able to do, is to react. That's why you have a front and back brake. And I guess that's why they don't let rear and front brakes be linked hydraulically. Because if the system fails, you have a backup brake. That's the whole point of it, you know?